Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Okay, lesson 1-4, vacation expenses. Got a lot of uh, vocabulary in this one. Raw data, normal curve, standard score, z-score, normal distribution, asym or asymptotic, and tails. Raw data, so I have the three, first three definitions up here. Raw data is data that is collected from a source and has not been processed for use. So let me give you an example. If I told you, Two hundred people have been vaccinated for COVID. Okay, with me just saying that, there's no way for you to process what that means. Then, if I changed it to two hundred students in the high school have been vaccinated, then you would say, "Wow, that's a lot of people that got vaccinated because our school's not that big." Or I could say, two hundred people." from the base Sigonella have been vaccinated, then you'd be like, why aren't people, why aren't more getting vaccinated? How come only 200 have? So without knowing what, the, what group the data is coming from, it is kind of meaningless and that's raw data, okay? Uh, normal curve. Normal curve is a bell-shaped curve showing a particular distribution of probability over the value of a random variable. It is often called a bell curve. So as you can see over here, normal curve and bell curve are both there. They both mean the same thing. Uh, standard score is the number of standard deviations by which the value of a raw score is above or below the mean value, x bar, of what is being observed or measured. It is also called a z-score. So standard score and z-score basically are the same thing. Okay, so that's just to get started. Okay, example one, a summer camp is taking their 220 sixth graders on a trip to an amusement park. For safety purposes, some of the rides have height requirements. The campers heights have a mean of 56 inches and a standard deviation of three inches. What is the z-score for a camper with height of 62 inches? Hmm. No idea. So we need this formula for Z, Z score. But then we have X and we have this weird shape here, which is another Greek letter from the Greek alphabet. And it's called mu, M-U, mu. And then down below is lowercase sigma, which means standard deviation. All right, so let's just make a list of these. Z, hello. Z is Z score. All right. Mu, what does mu mean? It represents the mean, okay? So the raw score will be re represented by X. So let's say X equals raw score, okay, we're going to use the Greek letter mu to represent the mean, so this is the mean, the average, and sigma to represent standard deviation. All right, so this problem isn't really that difficult once we know what all these letters represent. Z is z-score, mu is mean, x is the raw score, and, and sigma is the standard deviation. So now all we have to do is substitute in our givens. The question is asking, what is the z-score? So we wanna find z, okay? The average mean or I mean the X raw score is here and the mean, here's mean. Let me just highlight everything. A mean of 56, standard deviation of three, asking for the Z score. The summer camp is taking their 226 graders. 
Okay, so there is all the data point, pointed out to us. And oops, one thing I forgot. Um, a camper of a height of 62 inches, that would be our raw score. Okay, so now we should have, now it's just a simple substitution problem. So Z is what we're trying to find. X is the raw score, which is 62, minus mu, which is the mean, and the mean is 56, divided by sigma, which is the standard deviation, which is three inches. So there's our formula filled out. Now we just simplify. 62 minus 56 is six divided by three, and that simplifies to two. So the Z score equals two. That wasn't so bad. So now check your understanding. Pause the video, see if you can do this. Come back and see how you did. Okay, let's see how you did here. I will scroll up, but not so far as to take anything off the screen. So again, it says express his height as a Z-score. A camper on the trip has a height of 54 inches. 54 inches is our raw score X, okay? Express his height as a Z-score, round to the nearest hundredth. So we're gonna say Z equals X minus mu over sigma, okay? I'm a huge proponent of these four steps doing these problems. One, write the formula. Two, substitute the givens. Three, simplify and solve. And check to make sure that your answer makes sense in the context of the problem, okay? You do that over and over, it just gets so easy. This is a walk in the park. So Z equals X being our raw score of 54 minus 56 is our mean divided by sigma, which also hasn't changed, standard deviation of three. This is going to equal negative two over three, which equals a negative, and it says round to the nearest hundredth, zero point. Well, this is six, six, six repeating. So to the, rounding to the nearest hundredth is six, seven. And I need to be careful here when I go from a fraction to a decimal that, that, that never terminates, repeating decimal, I need to say it's an approximation. So your answer should be Z is approximately negative 0.67. Okay, example two says the height of a certain student on a trip has a Z score of negative 0.5. So whenever the z-score is negative, it means that they are below the average. They're left on the bell-shaped curve or normal curve, all right? So they're, they're below the mean. What is the student's height in inches? That is the question. So you know the student's height is below average. That's what we know. So we're using the data from the prior question. So I need to go back so I don't make a mistake. I think the standard deviation was three, but let me make sure. So we have a standard deviation of three and an average of 56. Standard deviation three, mu 56. Okay, z-score negative 0 0.5. We want to find the raw data, the student's height, x. Substituting the givens, so z negative 0. 0.5 equals x, which is what we're trying to find, minus mu divided by the standard deviation. Okay? In order to solve this, we want to get rid of the denominator. So we multiply both sides by 3. Those cancel. And negative 0 0.5 times 3 is negative 1.5 equals x minus 56. To solve for x, we add 56 to both sides. These cancel. We get x equals 56 plus a negative 1.5 or minus 1.5 is 54.5 inches. 
Okay, so he's below average and he's an inch and a half shorter than the average, 54 and one half inches. Now pause the video, see if you can do the check for understanding and then check your answer when you're done. Okay, so here we go. Assuming you've done this, the distribution of money the camper spent on souvenirs has a mean of $12. A standard deviation of $1.20. Find the amount spent by a specific camper who had a Z-score of 1.5. So we're looking for find the amount spent. So that would be our uh, X. So I'll make that blue. X is our raw data. So then I make a list of what we were given. Mu equals 12. Sigma equals $1.20 and z equals 1.5. Those are our three givens, and all you have to do is substitute it into this equation. z equals raw score minus average over standard deviation. So when I do that, here's what I get. z 1.5 equals, we're trying to find x, minus our average, which is 12, divided by standard deviation of 1.2. To answer this question, we want to multiply both sides by 1.2. Okay. These cancel. I'm going to take 1.2 times 1.5. Well, 1 times 1.5 is 1.5, and 2 times 1.5 is 0.3. 1.5 plus 1.3 is 1.8. Okay. Or use your calculator. Equals sum x minus 12. Add 12 to both sides, okay? And x equals 12 plus 1.8 is 13.8, and it's money, so I'm gonna put a zero there. And there's our answer. Find the amount spent by a specific camper who had a z-score of 1.5. He spent $13.80. Now let me explain that on a line. So if we have this line here and right here is, I don't want to use X bar, we're using mu. Here's mu, okay? This is mu plus, or actually um, the average is in the middle and then your standard deviation is um, sigma, okay? So that's right there. And this would be a negative sigma. And then there's two, two standard deviations, three standard deviations, four standard deviations, and so on. So what this means is if the average is $12, let's put it up here. Here's the average, okay? Standard deviation is $1.20. So this would be $13.20 to the right and $10.80 to the left. Okay, so this camper spent more money than the average, 1.5 is positive. So if I go out to two standard deviations, I would add another $1.20 to 1320 and get 1440. Well, a half a standard deviation is one and a half standard deviations or 1.5 standard deviations. And the number has to be halfway between 320 and 440 or 1320 and 1440. And that answer is 13.80, 60 cents, and then 60 cents. Okay, so that kind of hopefully draws a picture of where that would be located on a bell shaped curve. Okay, not a very good one, but there's the bell shaped curve. Okay, moving right along, now we have a definition of the normal curve. So off to the right here, as you can see, um, normal curve and normal distribution are basically the same thing. So it says the normal curve is a graph of the normal distribution. And since it reflects so many real life variables, it is often used in the natural and social sciences to depict the dis distribution of certain variables. What does the curve look like and what are some of its characteristics? So the normal curve is bell shaped and is often called the bell curve. And by the way, here's a picture. The middle score represents the mean, X bar, and the mean equals the median in a normal distribution. 
So there's a key term right there, or key information. The mean is equal to the median in a normal distribution. So if this is not skewed, if it's not stretched to the right or stretched to the left, if it is, if it is a mirror image along the mean line, the middle, then the mean equals the median. Most of the scores cluster around the mean and that makes the graph go up because there's some frequency is increased and then decreases again. All right, fewer scores occur as you get farther from the mean, either below or above. The curve is asymptotic to the horizontal axis. So having taken algebra two, you should know what an asymptote is. Okay, it's a line that a function gets really, really close to, keeps getting closer and closer and closer, but never gets to it or crosses it. Okay, so this bell-shaped curve will never cross the x-axis. All right, so there's asymptotic. There's the definition of that. All right, the mean, this means that the ends of the curve called the tails, and there's the other one, asymptotic, so we covered asymptotic and we covered tails, okay? These are the tails right here, tails here and going this way. They get closer and closer to the horizontal axis as you move away from the mean. They never touch the horizontal axis. It looks like they're touching, but they never touch, okay? The area under the curve equals one. So if we found the area underneath this curve, it equals one, which represents 100% of the data in the distribution. Notice that 50% of the data is above the mean and 50% is below on the normal curve. The area of any interval under the curve represents the percent of data that is within that interval. So in other words, if I wanted to know how much data fell between the first and second, um, what is this doing? If I wanted to know how much data fell between the first and second, um, let me get my thing here. So here is the first standard deviation right here. So if I drew a vertical line up like that, and here's the second standard deviation right here, okay? So if I wanted to know how much data fell between these in here, this area in here, that would be the area under the curve equals one. Okay, where was I? The area of any interval under the curve represents a percent of data that is within that interval. To find these areas, you will need to use z-scores and table one on page 7, 18, and 19 in the appendix of financial algebra. You obviously don't have a book, so I brought in that table and it's right here, okay? So here is part of the table, only in the negatives. Those are Z's, by the way, Z scores, okay? So now we're moving on to example three. So it says, recall the amusement park trip from examples one and two. A certain ride requires a rider to be at least 51 inches tall. The heights are normally distributed with a mean of 56, standard deviation of three, approximately how many of the campers, 226 graders will not be allowed on the ride. Okay, so that is the question. Now we wanna know how many are too short for the ride. Okay, so sometimes you have to think about these a little bit. What is the question asking for? What do I know? Okay, so the first thing you need to do is draw a bell-shaped curve as best you can and label it with the mean. The mean is 56, so I'm going to write 56 here. Okay, here's the mean right here. These little marks here are one, two, three standard deviations to the right and one, two, three standard deviations to the left. This, and we know that the standard deviations are 50 are three, standard deviation is three. So if I want to know how many students can ride this and they have to be at least 51 inches tall, then that's below average, so I wanna to work to the left. So if I go one standard deviation to the left, 56 minus three is 53. 
that's still taller than 51. 53 minus three is 50, that's too short. So now I know approximately that my data falls between, here would be 51, here's 52. So I would say approximately right here. And then I would shade this side over here. And I wanna know the area under that curve because that is the percent of 100 that are, have students that are less than 51 inches tall. So that is the context of this problem. And we wanna use our formula. Z equals our raw data minus mu divided by our standard deviation. So if you write this over and over and over again, it gets routine. Plug in our givens, okay? Standard deviation of three. And we have our at least 51. We're trying to find the z-score, by the way. Our raw data is 51. Our x is 51 minus our mean of 56 divided by our standard deviation of three. That is going to equal 51 minus 56, which is negative five divided by three. That would be negative one and two thirds as a decimal, which is approximately, I should use an approximation here. So it's a repeating decimal. So Z is approximately negative one and two thirds is 0.6 repeating. I'll say negative 1.67, okay? That's our Z score. So then we come to this table here and we want to find negative 1.67. Here's negative 1.6, zero is right here. Negative 1.61, negative 1.62, three, four, five, six, seven. And it would go out eight, nine in the book, but they didn't copy this for us. So we wanna find negative 1.6. The 10th position is in a row. The 100th position is in the column. You find where they meet and 0 0.47 or 0 0.475 is our negative 1.67 z-score. All right, so that means that we have 0 0.475. And remember, percents, you move the decimal two places to the right. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not. 0.47. I thought that was high. <clears throat> it's 0.047. So 0 0.047, moving the decimal two places to the right, tells us it is about 4.7% of the 200 kids will not be tall enough to ride that ride. Okie dokie. So now there's a check your understanding. Use the data from example three. If another ride requires riders to be 60 inches tall, what percent will be able to ride that ride? Okay, so it says to use your data from example three. If another rider ride requires riders to be 60 inches tall, what percent of the campers will be able to go on the ride? So if we're using the data from up here, the mean is still 56, the standard deviation is still three. And let me write that, okay? So mu equals 56. So that goes here, standard deviation equals three. So this is 59, adding three. This is 62, adding three. And now I know where we're supposed to be to get to 60. So I'm going to first draw a 59, 60, 61. So I wanna be one third of the way over into there. And I just kind of answered the question since this is even values. All right, kind of already answered it. We already found Z without even doing it, but we'll do it anyway. The standard DV or Z equals X minus mu divided by sigma. Learn the formula. Z equals X, in this case, 60, minus the average of 56 divided by three. So Z is going to equal 60 minus 56 is four. So that would be three, four and a third. So that's over here or one and one third. 
So Z is approximately 1.3. Okay, so now I need the table because we're positive. Okay, so you wouldn't have been able to finish this problem because I didn't give you this table. So here it is. And notice 1.3 is only out to the 10th. So I want to keep going. Remember that four thirds is one in 1.3333333333 repeating. So here is the table from the book. Okay, going from zero all the way to 3.8 from the positive direction, we are at 1.3, which is right here. So we want to go over to where these two columns come together, which is like so. And there's our answer. So that is 0 0.9082. So therefore, 90 or about 91, what did it say to round? Use the data from example three, what percent of campers will be able to go on the ride? So I would say approximately 91%. Okay, so now I want you to think about that a second. Does that make sense? Back on the last problem we did, a student was only 51 inches tall is was the minimum requirement and only 4% could not ride the ride. Okay, over here, there were 4.7% who were not 51 inches tall. Now we move the re restriction up, we're requiring more people or less people because we're requiring the people to be taller to ride a ride, we increased it nine inches. So the number of people who can ride now should be less, not more. All right. So if I come back here, whenever we are working on the other side of here, the, the value that we get from this table is the data to the left. So if 90, remember 50% on each side, this is 50% and then more, so 91% would be what I shaded in blue, or 90.82. So what we wanna to do to answer this question is subtract it from 1.000. And when I do that, I get nine, 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 nine minus two is seven, nine minus eight is one, nine, zero, point. So now it makes more sense. Now we're at 0.09. One seven. So instead of saying 91%, we're now going to move the decimal two places to the right. It's approximately 9.2%. Only 9.2% can ride the ride. 90.8% are too short to ride the ride. What percent of campers will be able to go on the ride? 9.2%. So be careful with that. When you're to the right, these values are the area under the curve to the left of where we are, and you need to subtract them from one. Okay, now let's see, I guess that's it. Okay, example four, it says families of students at Smithtown High School were surveyed about their vacation expenses. The results were normally distributed so we have a bell-shaped curve. So you should always, once you see normally distributed, all right, let me highlight that. Once you see normally distributed, then you can use this normal distribution, normal curve, normal distribution, bell-shaped curve. The mean is $2,313. The standard deviation is $390. The question is asking what percent of families took vacations that cost between two and $3,000. So now we're not doing more than, we're not doing less than, we're doing between. Okay, a little bit more work required, but it's still the same concept. Okay, so don't get discouraged. First thing I wanna do is write a formula, Z equals the 
raw data minus mu over standard deviation. All right, set that aside for a minute. Label your bell-shaped curve mean of 2313. So I'm going to put 2,313 right here at X bar. All right. Standard deviation of 390. So off to the side here, I'm just going to go 2313, add 390, and I'm going to get 3072. Okay. That would be right here, 2700. We're not at 3,000 yet. We need to keep going. Add another standard deviation of 390. We're going to get 3,903. 3,093 is here. So I'm just approximating where on this curve we are working. So if this is 3,093, 3,000 might just be a little bit to the left of that. Let's just say right there. There is our 3,000. Okay, do the same for 2000. Take 2313 and subtract the standard deviation. Three minus zero is three, two, 11, two, two to one, 12, nine, one. 1923 is here, that's far enough. I will draw my line, okay? 1923 is less than 2000. So 2,000 would be to the right somewhere. Maybe here. I moved my thing, I had to put it back. All right, so let's try that again. right about, I would say there. So what we're trying to find is the area in between these values. So I wanna find this area under this curve in here. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, if I find the area over here, and subtract it from the total. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to find, we're gonna use this formula. So Z is going to equal X, which is 2000 minus our mean divided by our standard deviation. Okay. 2000 minus 2313, enter, is negative 313 divided by 390, gives me negative 0 0.803. Okay, so now that I've got that, let's just drop off that three, negative 0 0.80. All right, now I want to know what the area below Z equals negative 0 0.80 is in the table. Okay, so then I go to my table. And I want to find negative, that was the first page. Negative 0.8, okay? I haven't done the negative full side yet. Okay, so I wanna find negative 0 0.80. Here is the negative page. So if I come down here, point, negative 0 0.8 is right here. And the zero is right here. There's no need to draw a line down. It's 0.2119. Okay. Okay, so we need to do this one more time for 3000. So now we just say Z equals. All right. 3000. 
Okay, this thing is malfunctioning for some reason. Z equals 3,000 minus 2,313, which is our mean, divided by our standard deviation of 390. Okay, so if I do 3,000 minus 2,313, I get 687 divided by 390, and that gives me approximately 1.76153. That rounds to 1.76. So then I'm going to go to my table. I switched it to the positive. 1.7 is here. 6 is here. 0.06 is here. 6 one hundredths. So I come all the way over to here. I come all the way down here. And it's 0 0.9608. So I'd say area below Z equals 1.76 is 0 0.9608. Okay, so if we take a picture of what we just did, let me explain that. Okay, so let me sum this up for you. Here are three pictures, okay, right here. We want to know this. We found, oops, this one to be right. Let's try that again. This number right here, area below 0.8 is this. All right. Area below 1.76 is 96%. That came from here. So what we are actually doing is taking this whole thing, but we want to subtract this off to get in between here. Does that make sense? So if this is right here, we only want this piece. So we take the whole thing, which is this, minus this left end, which is this, and that will give us our answer. So we take 0 0.9608 minus 0 0.2119, okay? So 0 0.9608 minus 0.2119 is 0.7489 or about Okay, or we could just leave it 74.89% of the people in this problem, their cost was between $2,000 and $3,000. Okay. Okay, so this one says to use the data from the family's vacation expenses in example four to find the percent of families that had vacation expenses between $1,000 and $2,000 round to the nearest percent. Now, I know you can't do this because of the tables not being in your book, and I don't have the tables here readily available for you um, unless you back the video up and look at the tables there. You could do that. So here we go. All right, so we're now going to be between $1,000 and $2,000. So what we want to do is bring in a uh, bell-shaped curve first. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this a little bit quicker this time. So label your bell-shaped curve. The mean was 2313, $2,313, standard deviation of 390. So I'll just write that here. Okay, standard deviation, that's supposed to be sigma. Standard deviation of $390. So Z equals, X, and these are our X's, okay? So let's do the lower bound first, 1,000 minus the mean, 2313 divided by 390. All right, so I'm gonna go into my calculator and I'm gonna take 2313 minus 
390. And that's going to give me 1923, which is here, minus 390. That's going to give me 1533, which is here. We're still not down to 1,000, minus 390. And that's 1143, which is here, not point, $1,143. And we're still not there at a thousand. So minus 390 would bring us all the way down to a fourth standard deviation out here, which was what? 753. So remember this bell-shaped curve never touches. So it's really getting small area down here. And a thousand is 143 away, which would be approximately here. So we want to find the area of the data between here and where would the other one be, which is Z equals 2000 minus 2313 all over 390. All right, so I'm just finding them on the graph first. So now I'm going to take, um, let's see, 2313 minus 390 again. And that was 1923, and that's less than 2000. So now I already know that I'm somewhere over here. So I want to know the area under the curve over here between this value and this value. So then I'm going to find this Z value, which is 1000 minus 2313, divide that by 390, and I get negative, let me see if I did that right, 1,000 minus 2,313 is negative 1,313 divided by 390 is negative 3.36 repeating. Okay, do the same for this z-score, and it's 2,000 minus 2,313, obviously negative 313, divided by 390, and that's going to be a negative 0 0.803. Okay, now our table only goes out to hundreds. So this 0 0.66 would round to 0 0.7. <laughs> All right, and this one would round to 0 0.80. All right, now we're going to look those up in the table. Okay, so now we want to find the percent with that z-score. All right, so the negative 3.37, so it's negative 3.3, which is here. 0.07 here, straight across, straight down, and it's 0 0.0004. Negative 0 0.80 is down further. 0 0.80 is right here, 0.2119. Okay, so let me get rid of this now. All right, so what I know is 0.2119 is everything to the left of this line. 0 0.0004 is everything to the left of this line. I don't want to count them twice. So to answer this question, I say 0.2119 minus 0 0.004 equals 0 0.2115 or 21.15% of the population that were asked, percent of families that had a vacation between $1,000 and $2,000. Okay, so there's that one. Okay, example five says a local travel magazine rates hotels using integers from zero to 100. 
Last year, they rated over 2,000 hotels. The ratings were normally distributed with a mean of 78, which is given in the diagram, and the standard deviation of 6.5. How high would a hotel's rating have to be for it to be considered in the top 10% of the rated hotels? Hmm. Okay, so keep in mind that, <clears throat> excuse me, this line right here, this is 10% of the data. So everything to the left has to be 90% of the data. So this is the 90th percentile, okay, right here. The other thing we want to list is everything that we were given. A local travel magazine, okay, the range of erosion, mean. Oh, by the way, normally distributed. All right, standard deviation, 6.5. How high would the hotel's rating have to be for it to be considered in the top 10 percentile? Top 10 percent of the rated hotels, which is the 90th percentile, okay? So that's what we're trying to do. So we write the formula, Z equals X minus mu divided by sigma. So we want to find the z-score. Ninetieth percentile. <clears throat> is 0.9. Okay, so we're working backwards. So I don't want to put z equals. We want to get the z from the table. So here is the table. And going all the way out to here, here is where 90% is, 0.8997 is pretty darn close to 90%. And that is 1.28. So that's our Z. So <clears throat> this has to equal 1.28. How high would the hotel's rating have to be? Well, what is the hotel's rating where the mean is 78? The standard deviation is 6.5, and the hotel ratings would be our raw data. Okay, we're trying to solve for x. So let me just use the calculator for this to save time. So we're going to multiply both sides by 6.5. Okay, so clear the last problem. 1.28 times 6.5 equals 8.32 equals x minus 78. Add 78 to both sides. These cancel. We will get x equals 2, 3, 6, Eight. Okay. All right. So X equals 86.32. So a score of 87 will allow the hotels to advertise in the top two percentile. So they would want a score of 87 or greater. Okay. So we want X to be or 80, let's see, let me write that properly. We would want X to be greater than 87, okay? For them to be in the top 10th percentile. All right, now check your understanding. Use the travel magazine statistics from example five, find out what hotel rating would have to be below to be ranked in the lower quartile of hotels. Find out what hotel's rating would have to be below to be ranked in the lower quartile of hotels. Round to the nearest whole number. Okay, so as you saw in the last problem, what we do is we look in the table for the percent. What is the lower quartile? And I meant to highlight that. 
I clicked highlight, but sometimes my pens don't do what I asked them to do. Let's try that again. Uh, the lower quartile of hotels. Well, what percent is a quartile? Quarter, 0.25%, 25%. So I'm looking for a value in this table that's around 0.25, closest to 0.25. All right. So as you can see, 0, 0 is 0.5. And I want 25%, here's 99%, here's 50%. So it's not in this table on this page. Okay, so would it help if I had the negative values because anything less than 50%, that's where it's located. All right, because we're less than middle. So we're uh, negative deviations, hello. Okay, so anyhow, 25%, where is it? So here's 13, here's 15, here's 18, here's 21, here's 24. So 23, 22, so where is it? Where is it? Scroll down some more. 27, 26, 26, 2578, 2546, 2514, 2483. So here are the two numbers around 25%. This is 14 one thousandths. And this is 17 one thousandths. So this one is closer. So I go up and it's 0 0.07. And I go to the left and it's negative 0 0.67. All right. So Z equals negative 0 0.67. There's our Z value. OK. Now we use our formula Z equals X minus mu divided by sigma, Ooh. Ooh. okay, negative 0.67 equals, and it says what hotel's rating, that's our x, minus mu, which was 78 with a standard deviation of 6.5. Okay, now it's just simple algebra. Multiply both sides by 6.5. Okay, negative 0.67 times 6.5, enter, is negative 4.355. equals x minus 78. Add 78 to both sides and get x equals 73.645. Or 70, <clears throat> that would be their score. So there is no or. Okay, that would be the value. So it says what hotel's rating would have to be would have to be below to be ranked in the lower quartile, round to the nearest integer. So it have to be below seventy three point six five. Round to the nearest integer would be seventy four. So X would have to be less than seventy four to be in the lower quartile. All right, so that's the lesson.